Good morning, my name is Kirsty Dignam and I'm here to talk about the weekly collective energies. Let me just adjust that camera. Is it going to? Yes, or well, that, that will have to do. Yes, here to talk about the weekly collective energies and I'm sat in my dining room. The sun is shining outside. There's an awful lot of light around me and I'm freezing cold. So I actually have the heater on beside me and I am journeying today with the Two of Pentacles and there's a real emphasis there of balance. But what I noticed this morning was even though it looks sunny outside, it's still deceptively cold in certain areas or in the UK in particular. And feeling into that, I could really feel a personal acknowledgement that even though things look ready to be enjoyed, to be... Um, well, when it's hot, when it's sunny, what do we do? We we reduce the amount of clothes that we wear, we strip off. So even though it may feel like things are ready to be stripped, it still feels like the environment for this may be cold, <laughs> may not be as receptive as we may like this week. And when I went into that, to ensure that it wasn't just a personal thing that was being reflected. That really felt like one of the key tools this week and every week and every day. Is this a personal thing or is it being reflected to me from someone else's energy? Is this relevant to me? And obviously the same goes with this video. I can feel a stop start type energy as I'm talking and I actually use some aromatherapy sprays today, some Archangel Metatron sprays today, available from Amanda Ellis, and I'll put a link in the comments. And the one that I used immediately was recovery, and it really feels like we are all in a place of recovery at the moment, whether that be illness, whether that be taking five minutes from work, whether that be reassessing where we're at. That's the whole point, recovery. We're having a chance to recover things that we may have put to the side, um, including our own health, um, ideas, really to establish where we're actually at. Now the other sprays that I continued to use after I'd used the recovery, so the whole emphasis behind this, behind taking this time to recover or recover <laughs> certain aspects that aren't ready to be seen yet. The other sprays that I use, I'm trying to remember now, were the Higher Heart, the Alter Major, the Mouth of God, a uh, source of inspiration. Um, then obviously our creative center, my creative center needed readjusting as a result of these shifts in the higher heart and the Alter Major. Um, and what else was it finally? Upgrades, upgrades and expansion, and then back to recovery. So it really, really feels like an underlying message this week. Not so much that it being upgrades, even though it can feel like that at first, that there's upgrades occurring, but more a, a return, a recovering back to what it was we may have been originally trying to create to ensure that it comes from a space of the higher heart, to ensure that it comes from a space of divine guidance now. It feels like a lot of stripping has actually occurred. Thank you. When I finally get into that energy, it starts to flow. It feels like a lot of stripping has actually occurred, but until we realize that, we're almost going to continually get these upgrades to ensure that that shift happens. One of the biggest upgrades we can actually receive is to look at where we are, not where we've been or where we want to go, but presence by being present in that moment. That's when the massive healing comes through, the massive guidance comes through, any changes that need to occur actually occur by being present with where we are. And this week in particular, the difference between upgrades and recovery is the presence our presence in that moment. So if we're not grounded, if we're not connected or aligned to what it is we're trying to achieve, we're going to receive possibly unnecessary upgrades this week by searching outside of us for certain things. However, I can slow down my ear. <laughs> However, the more present we are, the more we recognize those upgrades have already occurred within us. So where are we going with this? It's all about recovery. It's all about recovering gifts that may have been hidden, about recovering certain aspects of ourselves that may have been placed to one side, 
and reinitiating that into how we create, reinitiating that higher heart aspect, that higher connection in the very things that we are creating now. Without that, upgrades are just, just upgrades. <laughs> upgrades are just potential. Without applying it to what we're creating, yeah, that is the ultimate upgrade. It's it's like the learning cycle. Once we learn, once we change, once we adapt, once we heal, we then go on to apply that to life. And that's where the ultimate experiential learning comes from. And the difference between upgrades and recovery this week is how we experience them. Okay, so is there anything else on that? The other thing that I noticed um, before I started the video, my hair was actually in plaits and it was all skew if and I thought, what would just happen if I let my hair down? Well, it's very curly um, and there's something in that about just letting our hair down this week, just relaxing and keeping balance. So obviously I am on the two of pentacles and I can associate with some of the guidance that's coming through, but collectively as well, keeping balance, how do we do that? Whether there's upgrades, whether there's recovery, whether there's change occurring or whether we're having to wait, it's all about our core strength this week. Our core spiritual strength, emotional strength, physical strength, financial strength. Where are we at? How strong are we to receive the upgrades that A, we've been searching for, B, that are occurring? You know, it's those two things here. We can ask for something you know, and ask for that change to happen. But how strong actually are we in what it is we are asking for? That's a self-worth thing there. And also, yeah, it's both self-worth things. And also how willing we are to apply the changes needed. So big, big emphasis on self-worth this week. And a lot of the times we can look at self-worth in how we are treated externally. Oh, <laughs> the camera literally just fell off just literally fell off as I, as I was wiping the slate clean <laughs> and talking about external um, reflections and self-worth. You couldn't write that stuff. So a real opportunity to clear the slate this week. Um, obviously, we can tie that in with coincidences like that could have just been a coincidence. And it is about recognizing the difference. What is the difference between coincidence and intuit intuitive occurrences? what we define as relevant okay so we can very much look at a reading we can very much look at signs and synchronicities around us and read the energy but if we're going to be reading that with the relevance of where we're at that's what we're going to get reflected this week in particular if we want that upgraded wisdom and insight that is truly available it is about upgrading ourselves to be able to receive it very much linked to the self-worth there so yes externally we can say well we deserve to be treated better than x y and z and we deserve x y and z and that is an external thing and that can really lead us into the realms of boundaries which can be very beneficial to stand in our core however boundaries come from the self first they come from and to the self first so I actually experience OCD and OCD for me comes through in clearing things, but also in some obsessive thoughts as well at times, in particular certain things that I struggle to let go of. But a boundary I have with myself is, OK, can I do anything about that at the moment? No, then let it go. And it is about really having the self-worth now to balance anything that's coming through with our actions and letting it go, being the upgrade that we are looking for. Okay, anything else on that? So upgrades continually happen. Evolution is a continual process. Very often we almost need to slow down. Uh, we almost need to have to be almost pushed down to take a back step so that we can provide time for these upgrades to occur at the best of their ability. One way around that is presence. Being present in every moment. Now, I'm not saying sit and meditate throughout your day. If you can, that's fantastic. But if you are able to do that, you're probably less likely to actually need that. It's those that can't make the time that really need to make the time. What I'm suggesting is to be physically present in everything 
thing. And that can be very difficult when we see coincidences, when we see inspiration, when we um, gain insight from source, from wherever you want to call it. That can be difficult to then stay centered in where we are at. The more we walk different realms and different timelines and different potentials, or at least the more our awareness increases around that, the more difficult it can be to actually be present in the one true reality that is going to change things, which is this one. So we can talk about past lives, we can talk about what we want to bring in, we can talk about every different realm. But unless we are present in this one, making the changes as we go along, nothing is going to really shift. Really, really recognizing this week in particular, it is this lifetime. Now, for those that don't acknowledge past lives or whatever, obviously we are all entitled to our own opinions. But for those that do, in particular, this week, it is this lifetime that we concentrate on. And that feels really quite clear. To avoid almost a barrage of insight and healing and information that it, whilst relevant isn't applicable. That's the key message this week. Something may be relevant. Is it applicable to where you are now? It may be something that you've experienced in the past, but is it applicable to where you are now? So an example before I move on to the cards. This week in particular, I had to decide whether or not I wanted to take the counselling course that I'm doing to the next level. And at first I thought it was finances and then I thought it was time. Um, did I want to commit to the next four plus years of doing this? Could I financially afford it? And underneath what was really coming through was what was my why? Excuse me. What was my why? And I had to really look at, was it a knee jerk reaction? You know, for those that know psychology and counselling, you have the drama triangle and you have the rescuer and you have the, not my favourite term of words, but the victim and the persecutor. Was I coming from a rescuer role here? Did I want to help everyone? That's a beautiful thing, but where was that coming from? Was that coming from the child that had longed to have that help? Was that coming from the nurturing parent that wanted to give that help? Or was that coming from the adult ego state of where I am now? And the truth of the matter is it was coming from all these aspects of myself. Yes, I wanted to help people. I always want to help people. Um, yes, my own path has led me down the line of knowing what it's like not to have that help and what it's like to actually truly be heard and the impact that that can have. It needed to come from beyond these. It's great to use the relevance of our path for situations. But when it comes to helping others, aiding others, that's our experience, not theirs. And it's really, really important this week to be aware of that. And to be aware of why we may need to, may feel the need to share those experiences. It's going back to, again, is it actually time to strip ourselves bare? Why, from someone that's an incredibly open, vulnerable person, why are we so drawn to share these things? <laughs> yeah, really seeking out our why. So for me, with the counselling, what clearly came through from Source was that I was already doing it. And actually, to continue the counselling course would be to support and aid me to grow with what I was doing by understanding and gaining awareness of how, what, where and when to do the things that I was doing and to be recognised, obviously qualified, but also to be reimbursed financially for what I was already doing freely. So this week in particular, let's bring that all back round. This week in particular, upgrades, recovery. What is the difference? Our ability to be present within them. What is needed? Core inner strength in all areas of our life now. And to recognise why we do something, why we share, in regards to where we are. Not where we've been or where we would like to be, but in regards to where we are. Okay, so with that in mind, 
It is this that will truly upgrade and recover any gifts, any talents, any manifestations that may not have quite come through that we've been longing for through the way that we create. Because it will then be from a higher heart and an evolved, they want to say evolved, alter major. There's a real difference between upgrades and evolution. Upgrade is the potential, yeah? Evolution is what's actually occurred as a result, which takes time and acknowledgement of what is actually occurring. And that will come anyway. We will either end up being bedridden with a poorliness this week in particular. You know, the sun shining, everyone wears shorts. Next thing you know, there's colds um, because we're not quite ready for our environment. Or we will have the self-worth to take the time out, to take stock. And that can be a minutely thing. I totally relate that we may not have the time or perceive that we may not have the time. However... One breath, one breath and we've come into the body. Wiggling our toes, we've come into the body. Feeling our bottom on our chairs, we've come into the body. We've become present. If it becomes too much this week, less is more. Less is more. You know, there's a real direct, oh, <laughs> card, card just flown out. Real direct energy trying to come through this week. But that does take great presence. It is another channeling coming through this week. It is another upgrade coming through this week. But what I feel is it's from our higher self. Definitely from our higher self. So the cards that I've decided to use are Osho Zen Tarot. I didn't want to use Rider Weight. It felt like I wanted the energy to be more modern somehow. Um, the other decks that I have, I'm waiting for another deck, but the other deck that I have are the Light Sears Tarot, which is very modern. But this morning it felt like it was lacking a grounding type energy for me, a peaceful type energy. So when we talk about being strong in our core, what does that sum up? Zen. Okay, so today I will use the Osho Zen. And I just want to read actually what's on the back of the pack. No, it's not the pack, it's the book. They're telling me the back of the book, the back of the book. Oh, okay. The Zen attitude towards life is that of laughter, of living, of enjoying, of celebrating. Zen is not anti-life, it is life affirmative. It accepts all that is. This very body, the Buddha. When we're present, you know, we can talk about acceptance and forgiveness and awareness, but all of them require presence. All of them require Zen. And that doesn't mean to, well, like the book has just said, it's not about avoiding life. It's about being life. It's about living life. Okay, so the cards are a bit jumpy. So let's just, okay, energy this week really grounding down and when I feel myself grounding down I can see um, the pupil of an eye opening really really opening so what happens when the pupil of darkness uh, the pupil of an eye opens when the area is dark in order to see more so if we choose we wish well it was choose if we choose to see more this week it is going to take a lot of grounding a lot of grounding. If we true choose, choose <laughs> words all over the place, and it's actually very beautiful energy. It's energy where I feel like I don't need to do anything, uh, where it's just very clear and complete and fulfilled. Okay, Monday. I just realised all the cards are upside down. <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday, overall, and they are all upside down, so I'm going, I'm going to, so overall the energy this week is the Seven of Swords, now I can see why they're upside down, so looking at things upside down obviously gives me a different perspective, but what it also gains for me is the ability to pick the cards up and show them the right way up, okay, so overall we have the Seven of Swords this week, we have politics, yeah, we have 
removing that mask, things not quite being what they seemed, and the serpent here, a shedding, a shedding of the past. And what I'm going to do as I turn the cards over is leave them upright as a result. So these cards are initially upside down and that's causing a little bit of confusion in my mind. I can feel it. It's like, yes, but is that really as relevant because they're upside down? And I, I know some readers will read the cards differently if they're upside down. Sometimes I will. It depends on how I feel at that time, which is key. How do you feel? Do you need to read what is occurring differently? So I don't feel that this week. I don't feel the need to see things differently. I just feel the need to see them for what they are, turn them upright. So by seeing something for what it is, we turn it upright. We see its face value. We can then place the card back down for the healing, the insight back down, release it for the healing that has occurred. We do have at the top of the pack the Four of Pentacles, so we do have that miser energy. Are we? Are we able to release? Are we able to let go of our beliefs of who we are, of our beliefs of what is going on, of our place here? Are we really able to be present enough for things to change? Underneath we have the Seven of Pentacles, which is patience. You know, one of the first things I felt this morning, when I felt that to and fro energy, I just thought, oh, more waiting, <laughs> more waiting. And it can get very um, repetitive when we're not in the zone of living in the moment. Now, it can be really difficult when there's other things that we want, um, other things that we're trying to achieve, especially if we're not happy with where we are. But this week in particular, there's a real opportunity to shed what isn't relevant to us by taking off the mask, by really truly looking at ourself and our own self-worth, our own boundaries. Going back to that original message this week, if we want things to change, truly seeing them for what they are, flipping them on their head, reflecting them back to ourselves and putting those things in action from a more stable, upgraded, recovered, aligned, creative energy. Okay, so on the Monday, we have the High Priestess. We have that inner voice, that intuitive knowing here, and that's what the upgrade feels is like is occurring. It is an intuitive development with our higher self. I cannot stress that enough. This week in particular, it is with our higher self. And we can link that to guides. We can say that, you know, I saw uh, two magpies or however we want to see that externally. It is about bringing that information in and recognizing it is a message from our higher self. How we see our higher self is different for everybody. And I know some people will see their guides as separate. Um, Everything for me personally is energy. So our guides, what is being reflected to us, the messages, the insights can only be channeled when we acknowledge that they're part of what we're seeing, part of what we're understanding, part of our journey, part of us. OK, so this week in particular, real upgrade available from recognizing the intuitive people that we are. Not by separating what's occurring outside of us, but by knowing that it's part of us. I can really feel that around my crown chakra this week in particular. And what I feel collectively is that it's come in here. It's still trying to merge here in the throat which is essential to bring it into our voice, into our knowing, to channel, however we choose to do that, to channel this information now, to apply it to life, because then I start to feel it come down the body. Not quite into the knees or the toes or even the hips at the moment, and that may not occur this week, but it is about allowing that energy to come down in by applying it to life. The more and more we do that, the more real something becomes. So on the Tuesday, we have the Devil card, or in this deck, Conditioning. 
really reminds me of a wolf in sheep's clothing here. And again, it's that energy of, is everything what it seems? Yes, it just depends on how we see it. Yeah, just a lot of things this week are going to reflect back some of the things that we are addicted to and why. Some of the ways that we have held ourselves back. It may be uncomfortable this week. Um, is there anything else on that? I just see uh, sheep being sheared. <laughs> and having that that naked that naked body you know at, at our own pace this week at our own pace really recognizing what we are ready to share looking at the environment around us can this environment hold space for what we're choosing to share and if not you know when we share things that people aren't ready to hear or with someone that is perhaps not in the place to hold the space that we need to actually listen that can make us feel more vulnerable and more naked than we actually are and that can really affect our self-worth so looking at that this week and ensuring just ensuring those that you're surrounded by are able to hold space and that you can hold space for them as well okay on the wednesday we have the death card we have that transformation available and what I see here is third eye and throat transformation, almost a ending of how things are now in order to receive what is trying to come through. And it is in regards to our vision, our truth with our vision, how, how aligned are we with our vision? How much do we actually believe in our vision? And what do we have to let go of now that may be standing in the way of that? old patterns, old behaviours, old thoughts, old energies, old environments. What are we, you know, going back to that miser, what are we clinging to that is actually stopping us upgrading? You know, and that could be, I need to be, I'm really, really busy and actually I don't have time for this sickness or this illness or whatever. Um, I, I need to do X, Y and Z. I don't have time to meditate. And a lot of that is a very old perception of how things are. Or I need to figure out why I behave the way that I do before I can fix it. And I was talking to a dear friend of mine this week. And I'm one for understanding why we do the things we do. However, I'm very aware my own pattern is to continue to search for reasons, which is brilliant. It needs to be balanced with acceptance and also action. And this week in particular, we can find out why we do the things we do. But if we keep searching for reasons and searching for reasons without A, accepting who we are, bringing back that shadow, and B, acting on that in a different way, our self-worth could really take a knocking because it is, otherwise it's constant criticism. Are we evolving? Are we upgrading? Or are we constantly fixing ourselves, fixing, fixing ourselves from a place of non-acceptance? What actually needs to change by the Wednesday in regards to that? Because ironically on the Thursday, we have the Wheel of Fortune. We have change. So really, really going into the centre into the center of this all the masculine the feminine we have the triangle there we have the potential drama triangle there but we also am being reminded of the triangle on temperance's chest the alignment between the heart the third eye the higher heart the ultra major all of that aligning now which is definitely the energy i can feel around me the merkaba as well really looking at the energy that's in our auric field on the thursday so we may really feel like we've moved past this no come on we've done the work i know this what's in the aura so the human body recreates itself i think it's over the span of three years the stomach lining reproduces itself you know all of our cells reproduce their self the organs reproduce their self so why then do we continue to a repeat certain patterns b get continued diseases within our body the blueprint the auric field, the hard drive of our machine, does that need clearing out? And I can really feel that in my root chakra on the Thursday. Our place here, our connection, our stamp, our individuality. 
What do we do when we constantly try and fix ourselves? We do that from a place of judgment, which means we are saying we are not good enough in A, B or C. What do we do when we're not present in the life that we have? We're saying we want something else, which is fine. But if we don't keep that balance of doing it from a place of presence, where we are isn't good enough. OK, and that's the root chakra. Where are these desires from cha for change coming from? What is holding us back in regards to achieving them? Self-worth with the root chakra this week really going into that energy and as I do so I feel the throat open to receive what the crown is trying to bring in on the Friday I can't remember I know this is a, a water card I think it might be the page of cups I can't really remember and it feels like it doesn't matter the card is trust okay we know that it's water so we know it's an emotional trust that is needed here. And the stage, whether it's page, knight, king or queen, it really doesn't matter. It feels like all those energies need to come together now. The ability to receive, the ability to act, the ability to do, the ability to nurture here. Trusting a higher level of creativity combining all those aspects the child the adolescent the masculine the feminine really combining all aspects of that within us and trusting letting our hair down living life when did it become not advantageous to be present when did we stop living life and that may be a question worth reflecting on this week in particular when were you last really embedded in your life when did you really notice I don't know cliches it sounds the roses around you the arms of your lover the food that you were eating when did you last free fall and enjoy life without having to figure it all out this week because it feels like if we can step into that energy of trust that intuition will come through any anything that is tying us back anything that is needing to be brought to light will naturally occur alongside the transformation and the change I want to go back to the seven of politics, the seven of swords, the politics. I want to go, I'm feeling torn between the trust card and the seven of swords. Watching our mind this week, again, those boundaries with ourself, watching where our mind might flip off to. One of the beauties of being present, and it takes training, it really does, and it is about self-worth now. It is about acknowledging, I want to know where my thoughts are at. I want to know where my emotion is. I want to be aware of where my energy is right now. Really bringing that back and trusting that and not letting these things wander off so that the old patterns almost come along and put a mask in front of us and we behave the same way that we always have. We may see that around us as well, but you know what? Bringing it back to the self, always bringing it back to the self. What have you almost... There's a difference between acceptance and losing control. OK, real difference here between accepting and flowing and losing control. What have you lost control of this week? Where is your mind at? Where are your emotions? How much are you caring for your physical body? And it's a lot to keep in check. Maintenance of the human self is a lot to keep in check, but only when we're not present. When we're truly present in our body, when we're feeling our emotions, when we're aware of our thoughts, when we're truly present, what's going on? It's a millisecond action. It's, yeah, thank you, it's Zen. So on the Saturday, we have maturity. Now, this is a pentacle card, and I think it's either the king or queen of pentacles. And again, it's that emphasis of it really not mattering. The face here is non-gender, non-gender. Androgynous almost, a mixture of both. And that's the maturity that could come through by the end of this week. The balanced masculine, the balanced feminine here. Physical maturity of where we are. And having peace with that. When we have peace with something, it automatically starts to 
changed. The lessons have been learned, the upgrades have been received and the recovery can occur. That's all that wants to be said <laughs> with the Saturday. And on the Sunday, we have the Two of Cups. We have that friendliness here and we can bring this back down to basics. And that feels quite important by the Sunday to start bringing this energy back to basics now applying it to life applying it to the relationships with ourselves and with each other obviously we know i want to say we have the concept of the two of cups with great spirit and i'm saying it anyway <laughs> but actually that's not relevant that's my own my own understanding for my own journey this week and being aware of that really being aware of that in your everyday relationships Every relationship we have is a relationship with source. Whether that's how we relate to the earth around us, ourselves, the animals in our life, each other. And that's where I feel the block. The moment I said it, I feel a block. And that's where I see the pupil opening wider. Really, really looking this week. Really, really observing this week what is occurring in regards to connection to well to the light of all things but how you connect to yourself and to each other how you connect to another is a reflection of how you are connecting to yourself this week that's what i hear really being aware of that opening your vision now Yes, because how you connect with each other and how you connect with yourself is how you connect to source, if all things are source. How friendly are you to yourself? Has it taken an illness for you to stop? Has it taken complete burnout for you to reevaluate your work pattern? Has it taken desperation? I know on my part, we are now looking to move. And in reality, it's been there for some months, a year, perhaps. A little nagging insight in the back of my mind. And I've made do <laughs> with where we are from that place of self-worth. So really, really looking at how friendly you are in your own relationship. Because that will be mirrored in all of your relationships. You know, you are source as well. So are all of your relationships around you. So how do you connect to source? Yeah, there's work for me to do, definitely, in how I connect to myself. And that all comes from self-worth this week. All comes from self-worth. Okay, so... To summarise, we actually have... One, two, three, four major arcanas this week. So we have a beautiful balance, a solid structure here this week of intuition, of looking at our own light and what may be holding it back. The chance to really end cycles now, really, really end cycles and bring in new fortunes and new change. Once we step outside of the drama triangle, our own drama triangle, and bring about that balance of the masculine and the feminine, the acting, the reflecting. And ensure that we are in an environment that is safe enough to share these changes. Including our own environment. Are we ready <laughs> for the very things that we've been asking for? You know, we can often see divine timing as frustrating or we can lose patience. We're poorly, we want to get better, we want to get back to work, we want to do this, we want to do that. Are we actually ready to be the best that we can be? Are we ready for the changes that we're trying to bring in? What commitment do we need to make to those very aspects? Because we deserve self-worth and to be at our best in any given moment and so too do the things that we share whether that is a video a reading something we create um relationships whatever bringing it back to the self this week and recognizing where our own mind might be running away with itself so we also have four minor arcanas We'll count the miser as well at the bottom, but that's a four in itself. Excuse me. Just going to sit with that. So 
So I can really feel that in my higher heart. And when the energy was released from my higher heart, I felt like it was running out of my root chakra as well. And now I can feel it in my throat. And it was after I said the miser is a four in itself and it's a force all of its own this week that holding on, holding on is very, very prevalent this week. Again, are we ready for the changes? And there's no judgment there. If we're not, we're not. It's OK. But acceptance, you know, oh, I want to run a London marathon, but I've not even started going for a walk. Acceptance of where we actually are. It doesn't mean that you let go of the idea of running the London marathon, but it's not your forefront action plan this week. It starts small steps, small steps, small steps. When we hold on to just the bigger idea, we can't always see the small steps available to achieve that. So real practical terms this week. No one's saying let go of the dream. Break it down into smaller chunks because it's almost as if the dream, whatever that may be collectively, has become bigger than the very thing that is needed to achieve it. So it's almost like, for example, you really, really, really want to do a certain job but you're not physically up to it, but you'll concentrate on wanting to do that certain job. But you need to be physically up to it. So letting go of clinging to the end result this week. OK, so we have two cup cards, uh, trust and friendliness. And it is bringing it back to all the time we are nice to ourselves. Anything is possible. And that's where I want to leave it at that. Really, really treating ourselves the way we deserve to be treated. We can point fingers at others. We can point fingers at situations. But it is about how well do we treat ourselves when these things occur. One pentacle and that new beginning, that one pentacle card actually comes from maturity. It is time to look at how we parent Ourself. <clears throat> so one of the things that came up with Mother's Day the other day in the UK was about how well we mother ourselves now and to really, really look at how well we nurture what it is we're trying to create. You know, it's one thing to have a lot of ideas of things that we want to achieve, but unless we're going to look after the very vessel that is creating them, i.e. ourselves, they will only be achieved at that level. It is time to physically up grade our ability to receive what it is we are trying to achieve but that can only come from being friendly to ourselves, trusting our own ability and growing up a little bit mentally <laughs> gosh so that is all i'm going to say on that and what i'm going to do to lighten it up is to pick a card from rebecca campbell work your light oracle card and then we're going to call it quits because the sun is starting to shine a bit more outside the environment is becoming a little bit more enticing and welcoming. So, going to go for two. Oh, I think I've got three there. <laughs> okay, so we have Sisterhood of the Rose, Beauty and Devotion, Priestess, the Mystic and the Teacher. Now, these are all female, but that doesn't mean, obviously, just the female. All right, so it's the feminine here. It's the ability to support ourself as the mystic, the teacher, the intuitive. It's that high priestess energy here. And right next to it, we have Unbound, just like the conditioning card, just like the devil card, releasing soul patterns, contracts, and past lives. Sometimes we don't actually need to do anything to do these things. It is about being present and those lives that are no longer relevant, those contracts that are no longer relevant will disperse. So if we stand in a particular vibration, anything that isn't of that vibration won't be attracted to that. OK, so it's really about strengthening our ability to align to our higher self this week and anything that isn't for that journey won't be. But we must stand in that. So if we're poorly, we nurture ourselves. If we're sluggish and need a good swift kick up the bottom, we do that or we find someone that can do that. You know, really accepting with awareness where we are and then acting on it, <laughs> acting on it. That is an upgrade. Otherwise, it's pure potential. We are just as needed for the upgrade to turn into evolution in our actions. 
And then we have the ever unfolding rose. And again, it reminds me of the change card. Cracked open, it's happening for you, not to you. It's all part of our growth. It's all part of our evolution. And a rose, what does it do? It just blooms, it just opens naturally with its cycle, provided it gets the light that it needs and it's watered and fed and nurtured. Less is more this week, most definitely. And then underneath we have get grounded, empaths, highly sensitive, connect with nature. So again, it's that real, real preparing ourselves this week, really ensuring that we are ready for the delivery of whatever it is we have created and tried to achieve. Because underneath, answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? There's two there. So what is our soul? Ah. <laughs> okay, so answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? Really preparing for that. And when I ask what is our soul asking us to do? Have fun, celebrate and don't be so serious. These cards are just absolutely stunning. Is there anything else that they might want to add? So on the rose card, the ever unfolding rose, I see the, the woman there just relaxed, just letting go, letting down her hair. And on the unbound, I see the soul patterns, the contracts and the past life just being released, just letting go. The sisterhood of the rose, again, her head is held back and she's just letting these things fall down around her. And they get grounded. I, yes, <clears throat> so overall, within them all, there's a real sense of zen. A real sense of... <sighs> it just... <sighs> I don't think there's anything else to be said about that. The upgrades are going to occur. They're always occurring. If you are more aware of this one in particular, ask yourself why and why you need to be more aware of this one and how you're being made more aware of it because that's where the upgrade will be. Gosh, I've just had some realisations for myself as well. So, okay, whatever is shifting for you this week, whatever is changing for you this week, why are you more aware of it? How has your body made you more aware of it? What action do you need to take about that? Then it can be a true recovered upgrade. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.